Hello everyone and welcome to the Mirador webinar on a comparison of Android management methods in Mirador Online. My name is Sean Brennan and I'm a marketing specialist here at Mirador. So let's have a look at the agenda. First, our technical consultant and key account manager for Austria, Germany and Switzerland, Mr. Andreas Hambler, will run through a pre-recorded demonstration and more about that shortly. And then we'll have a live Q&A session to answer all of your questions. So we encourage you to type your questions in the question box during the demonstration. And then some closing remarks. So just a bit more about the demo. Uh, Andreas is going to show all the different ways to manage your Android devices in Mirrored or Online and what types of functionalities they include. This will include first showcasing the normal Android API and then showing the Samsung Knox API for those of you with Samsung devices. And then finally showing uh, Android for Enterprise, which includes both the profile owner modes and the device owner mode. So with that said, let's begin the demonstration. And I'll hand it over to Andreas. Thanks, Sean, and hello out there. As Sean mentioned, today we talk about possibilities to manage Android phones. I want to start with the first possibility to use the normal Android API. This API is integrated in all Android phones and there are some basic things you can do with this API. On my screen you can see the configuration profiles and I selected Android and as you can see here you can do device encryption with this API. You can do location tracking when using just the normal Android API because this is done by the Mirador client. You can enforce a passcode and you also can create web shortcuts or send Wi-Fi name and credentials to your phone. For using this normal Android API you have to enroll your phone to your Mirador site. This you can do by entering username and credentials to the Mirador client downloaded from the App Store or from the APK installation of the Mirador client and you can get the credentials when you go to the user, select the user and select send enroll message or create enrollment credentials. It's also possible to get enrollment credentials with our self-enrollment portal, but there is also a new possibility to do the enrollment with a file, with a configuration file on your phone. You can download it from the web or put it on your phone via USB storage or SD card and you find your configuration file here when you click Android devices and download custom configuration file. If you have your phone enrolled to Mirador Online, you can have a basic inventory with this API. You can see what apps are installed. You can have location tracking, encryption as already mentioned. And as you can see here, you can lock the device and you can wipe the device. These functionalities are all available by using the normal Android API. The second possibility of managing your Android phone is if you have a Samsung phone you can use the Knox API. There are more possibilities with the Knox API. As you can see on my screen, with the Knox API it's possible to black or whitelist applications. You can configure a mail client for IMAP or mail for Exchange for Active Sync. If you have an Android device, you also can configure your device into a kiosk mode and you can set basic restrictions like if it's allowed to use your camera, if it's allowed to use Wi-Fi or data roaming, if it's allowed to uninstall apps or install apps from unknown sources and a lot more. So the management of 
Samsung phones with the Knox API is more powerful than using the normal API of the Android operating system. For doing this way of management, you have to enroll your phone, you have to enroll it with the Mirador client with the same ways I showed you before for the operating system API with entering credentials or the file enrollment. But there is a third way to manage your Android phones and this is the most powerful way. This is Android for Enterprise. Android for Enterprise uses the API of the Google Play services. With Android for Enterprise or formerly known as Android for Work, you have two basic functionalities. This is the profile owner mode and the device owner mode. For the profile owner mode, you can enroll your phone also the way I showed you before with entering credentials or with the file enrollment. For the device owner mode, you can go here in Mirador Online to the devices and select Work Manage Device Provisioning. And then you have three possible ways to enroll your device. If you have an Android 7 or newer device, tap six times on the start screen when you switch on the phone the first time or after doing a factory reset and scan the QR code that's shown here on the right. Or if you have an Android 5 or 6 device, you can install the Mirador NFC provisioning app that scans this barcode too and pushes over the information to the Android 5 or 6 phone via NFC. Or if you have an Android 6 phone or a newer and you don't have a camera on it or you don't have a NFC reader in it, you can enter the AFW hashtag Mirador tag in the place of the Google account identifier. Then the device gets enrolled in the device owner mode. But what can you do with the device owner mode? This is very powerful. First, you can do real application management. You can install apps silent without having a Google Play Store account on the device to the device. You can pre-configure apps so that if you download an app like the Gmail app, you can pre-configure the mail server and the username and some additional things. And this you can see here. Here I configured a mail server. This is the mail server from Office 365 and SSL is required and also a username and the email address from the user. But what else can you do? You can also set permissions for apps on the server side. I click here on permissions and if I say my Gmail app shouldn't be allowed to write call logs, I can say here denied and then this application is not allowed to access my call log with the right permission. But there are also some restrictions you can set when you have your phone managed with Android for Enterprise. If I click here and create a new configuration profile for Android, I see here that I have some restrictions that I can set for devices with Android for Enterprise. I can say if re permissions are required, is there a prompt on the phone or can I say grant automatically or deny automatically or there are also some user restrictions like is the user allowed to configure VPN, modify the wallpaper or cross profile copy paste. So if you have a container, this work profile on your phone and you have an email in it and there is confidential information, is the user allowed to copy it to the private area of the phone? And you also can configure if it's allowed to capture the screen or use the camera. And for the device owner mode, in addition, you can configure 
if it's allowed to add a user, adjust the volume, if you allowed to do data roaming, to do a factory reset and several additional things. And there is one other thing I want to tell you about the device owner mode. I like the device owner mode very much because the bloatware is pushed away from your phone. As you can see on the right, this is my phone and if I go to the main menu, there are just some basic apps on it. The barcode scanner and the mirror OP app I installed because I need this for the screen sharing, but all other apps are the mirror client to do the device owner mode and the management of the phone. There is the phone app, there is the Play Store, there is the contact app and the Google search app. There is nothing else on it that consumes data or consumes battery. So I like the device owner mode very much and I think the Android for Enterprise or as it was formerly called Android for Work is the most powerful thing to manage Android phones also from different vendors like Huawei, Samsung, HTC or like this Nexus phone on the right. So this is what I wanted to show you today and I want to say thanks for your attention and John, the stage is yours again. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that uh, for that great demo, Andrea. So, um, <clears throat> with that said, uh, we're going to go to the Q and A part of the session. And uh, well, uh, one question um, I see here, at least, is um, <clears throat> if you don't enroll in Android for Enterprise, do you still get the same kind of functionalities like whitelisting and blacklisting? if you're using a non-Samsung device? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the default API from the, uh, from the Android operating system uh, is not offering this feature. That's why I personally recommend the Android for Enterprise. Uh, but in Android for Enterprise, there is no real app like whitelisting. There is something much better. If you switch your screen to mine, can you do sure. this? Sure. Yeah, I will do I that now. You. There you go. Yep. So I have here my apps. Can you see the list uh -huh. uh, of my apps? Yes. So if I go here at the right, configure managed Google Play Store layout for Android for Enterprise, I can define a special area it looks like the Google Play Store, but I can define what apps are in there. So as you can see here, I have this uh, managed Google Play Store and there are in here good apps like the Adobe Reader or Task and Notes. And if I want to have an additional app in my app store, like I want to whitelist this app, I just drag and drop it in here and then I have it available for my employees, for the user of the phone. So it's possible with Android for Enterprise, but it's not possible with the default management with the Android operating system API. Okay, great, thank you. Um, we got another question here. Um, <clears throat> they ask uh, which Play Store, so um, like what country's Play Store um, is, is uh, used for the apps? That's a good question. Uh, the Google Play services normally should know in which country the device is at the moment and then this is reported to the Google server and you just get these apps for your country. So like me, I'm in Austria, we have a carrier which is called uh, tele and if this tele carrier app is just available in Austria the Google services first have to know that my device is in Austria and then I'm available to install this app. Else I get a fault in the events that it's not possible to install this app because this application is not available in my country. 
normally it works uh, when I have Wi-Fi and GPS enabled that the Google services recognize very fast where I am and uh, use the Google Play Store of my country. Okay, great. I uh, hope that uh, answers your question out there in the audience. Um, so, um, as I see then uh, no further questions, um, I would uh, like to thank everyone for attending. And uh, of course, uh, again, I'd like to thank Andres for the great demonstration. So, um, we'll uh, have a uh, video link to the webinar sent out to you soon with the Q&A transcripts. Um, so, um, I'd like to thank uh, everyone once again and have a very nice uh, rest of your week. Thank you. I also want to say thank you and goodbye. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.